Welcome to Kermit Uncut. The BFI are bringing to Blu-ray one of my favourite films of all time, a film which I always cite as one of the greatest films ever made, which I first saw when I was a teenager back in the 1970s, had a profound effect on me and has really stayed with me ever since. The film is Les Yeux Sans Visage, Eyes Without a Face, by Georges Franju. It's a classic shocker from 1960, and it's an extraordinary piece of work. Some of you may remember a decade or so ago, I introduced it on the Film 4 Extreme channel and it got an extraordinary response. People hadn't seen it before and were amazed that a film from 1960 could be that gripping and indeed that shocking. The story is fairly simple. It's of a doctor who is attempting to rebuild a new face for his daughter who has been disfigured in an accident for which he was responsible. Edith Scobe is the daughter whose face is covered for most of the film by this featureless mask which has become extremely iconic and the film is melancholic and very, very lyrical and deeply sad, but also, in certain moments, visceral and very shocking. There is centrally a sequence which involves a face transplant, which for 1960 is genuinely extraordinary. The film is black and white, and in many ways that monochrome photography adds to just how alarming that sequence is. When the film first played at the Edinburgh Film Festival, a reported seven people fainted and were carried out of the screening, prompting George Franju to remark, well, now I know why it is that Scotsmen wear skirts. But the power of that film to alarm hasn't settled down at all over the decades. In fact, if anything, the film has grown more extraordinary as the years pass. Everywhere you look, you can see the legacy of Eyes Without a Face. If you've seen Halloween, John Carpenter has said that one of the reasons he chose a featureless mask for Michael Myers, actually, it's a William Shatner mask, painted white, was that he had seen Eyes Without a Face, and he was really struck by that idea of a featureless mask covering the central character. John Woo referred to Eyes Without a Face when he was making Face Off, which obviously draws upon Georges Franju's model. You can, if you want, read Pedro Almodovar's The Skin I Live In. It's kind of a remake of the themes of Eyes Without a Face. And if you saw Holy Motors, the Leos Carrax film, which features a performance by Edith Scobie, you will have noticed the multiple nods to the mask from Eyes Without a Face. And of course, it inspired Billy Idol's most famous soft rock anthem. So call me on the to tell me of Although perhaps the less said about that, the better. The thing about Eyes Without a Face is this. On the one hand, it's a film which is extraordinary for how much it shows. I mean, it seems unbelievably explicit. But in fact, it's all to do with suggestion. It's all to do with atmosphere. It's all to do with how much you are invested in the characters and their circumstance. And the second thing about it is, as with all great horror movies, underlying any sense of shock is a deep sense of sadness, a deep sense of loss, a deep sense of longing. It's a film which makes you recoil at some moments but also weirdly touches the heart. If you haven't seen it, check it out now. If you have, watch it again. It's a film which just doesn't grow old.